good? All right. I'm still waiting for it to pop up on my end over here. <clears throat> there we go. Sorry, guys. Still, still getting used to this a little bit. And we're adding. So we are adding? Yep. Cool. Sorry, we're, we're brand new to this, clearly. First episode. That's fine with me. <laughs> there we are. Welcome, Chris. How are you? Um, not bad. Uh, luckily, we just had power cut back on. We had an ice and snowstorm Saturday night, and we've been, we had been without power for a while, so we're good now. All right, well, I'm glad your power back's on, man. That sucks. It sucks being in a world with no power. Um, but anyway, yeah. number one, again, welcome. First episode of Talking Scare. We are so happy to have you with us, man. 30-plus years in the haunt industry. Um, that's incredible. Um, you've really, uh, almost as long as I've been around planet Earth, you've been scaring the shit out of people. <laughs> that is super, super cool. Um, so, again, 30 years. Uh, obviously, we love everything that has to do with horror. Um, absolute professional, and now for the past four years, you've been a professional clown, correct? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yes. Um, I'd say it's been almost 10 years now. Uh, we decided to do clowns at the haunted house that I worked at, and we started off small, just doing, you know, basic clown mask. Actually, I can't say basic. My first clown mask was 70 bucks, so I did spend a little bit on my first one. Uh, by today's standards, 70 bucks is not so much of a good mask, <laughs> but, um, we did that, uh, the first year, it was also the first year my kids helped in the haunted house. They were little, little, and they wanted to help. Finally, they, for years prior would refuse to even go in there and they wanted to help. We built a giant cage out of wood, wrap chains around it and did a birthday party scene with the clowns and the kids were in the cage screaming for help. And, um, that was, like I said, that was almost 10 years ago. And uh, I'd say about four years ago, um, I started seeing uh, a couple of clowns pop up on Facebook doing the live feeds and, and Instagram and all these different, you know, social media things outside of Halloween. And I was like, shit, I can do that. And this, I could easily do that. Yeah. And it was like uh, Flinch and Relic and uh, Screech. And I now am, I'm blessed to be friends with all those guys. Uh, all of my as seen behind me kind of sitting there uh all of my masks uh since i became an actual character came from chris sanders in in arizona and uh it's it's been a wild ride ever since i decided to create the character and go from there very cool very cool so um the the character you're talking about um a little bit the, the, i guess the latest one that you came up with can you tell us a little bit about about this character, how he came to being, or, or why why you've chosen um, to <laughs> there there there's there's kind of a funny origin to the the name. Uh, I, I had the, the color scheme down because all clowns kind of go with the color scheme. So I was like, all right, I want blue is my favorite color. Got to be blue and black. So uh, and most of the clowns back then, none of them were blue. Like literally, none of the big guys were blue. So I was like, good, it, it it'll, it'll be a, a good starting color, and and I can stick with it, and it's my favorite color. Cool. And I had already, because of my my art and all that, I'd already started designing what I kind of wanted it to look like as far as the face paint. And I had gotten in touch with Chris Sanders about getting a mask. And um, we had like a mutual deal going. I work for him. He works for me. <laughs> and um, 
I had all, I had everything down. I had the look and the feel and was ordering the clothes for it and the mask. And then the name was the only thing escaping me. So as far as the name goes, I work security work on the side. And I was at work one night. Uh, me and some of the other bouncers were cleaning up the bar. And I was telling them, you know, the whole deal. Like, I, I wanted a name that was kind of funny. And, you know, like how clown names usually go. And... It, but at the same time, I was like, if it was ocean or water themed, it would be good. And I was I was drawing a blank. And one of the bouncers named Zach, a huge guy from the across the bar, uh, I hear him yell, moist. And the, the <laughs> light bulb went off. The light, the light bulb went off. And I was like, that's it. And he was like, no, you're kidding, right? And I was like, no, 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 no. That's going to be the name. And he didn't believe me up until... It, it once I started like getting everything together on Facebook and Instagram and, and to this day when I run into him, he was like, I still can't believe you, you, you used that name. And I was like, it's perfect. No, it's perfect. <laughs> great, man. That's awesome. Um, well, thank you for sharing that. Uh, so anyways, like we said, you've been at this for, for quite some time. Um, how much has the haunt industry changed from when you got into it to where it is today? Oh, okay. That's, that's a good question. Like when I started, uh, I was asked by our mutual friends, me and a couple guys were asked by one friend. He was like, we're doing a haunted house in, in you know, the, the, the main town. It's, it's a tri-county area type thing or tri-town county, whatever, however you say it. But uh, the, the haunt was in a town called Crew. And so he was like, we're going to do it. It's going to be upstairs in this one spot. Got us all to show up. Uh, we all showed up, threw on masks, just, you know, we didn't know what we were doing. Uh, most of us were, were completely green and it had no clue what we were doing. And that first year was great. I got my first experience in how not to act in a haunted house. There was a guy, a okay. uh, big guy that I went to school with, huge guy. And one of the, one of the you know, I, I'm too tough to be in a haunted house guys came through and he swung on my buddy and Bud hit him and knocked him clean out. And they, his friends had to drag him out of the haunt. So that was when we were like, okay, we really need to like establish some rules about touching. And they didn't for years. It was even after that incident, it was, it wasn't until they moved uh, the haunted house to here in Burkeville where I live um, that we, we established that we had to have a, a, a big poster that had all the rules about not touching the actors. Actors won't touch you. And it's, that's one of the big changes is, when I started off, there was no set rules. You just, kids came through scared, adults came through scared. You hoped nobody hits you, <laughs> but it, uh, that's definitely been a big change. And especially with one of the biggest changes is how scares are done. Things have gotten so technical and very artsy. I'm, I'm big into black lights or everything in my room as far as clown stuff is black light. And it makes it a little harder to scare, but we have a number of hiding places and stuff like that. So it's trying to scare people without just jumping at them all the time is one of the biggest changes and one of the hard things in the industry, but it's fun. <laughs> it's uh, it's something we've enjoyed watching too, with the numerous haunts we've been to this year, just the, the different aspects, including the 3d paint, the black lights, all that stuff. And just watching it evolve. It's uh, it's impressive. It's very cool to see. Um, so you, you were kind of a, I guess, a quote unquote regular haunt actor for the majority of your career, just started doing the clown industry here lately. What is one of the biggest yeah. differences between doing the regular haunts as kind of a regular character versus now I am solely a clown. This is who I am. I'm moist the clown. Uh, all right. In the haunt, uh, in the haunts, it, it's, it's less of an actual character. Uh, you can still play it up and still be your be your character, but it's it's more just about the direct scare and hoping that the the lighting and the sound and everything kind of lends to it. And with being a character, because there's a lot of guys who do live feeds, and I know a lot of them. Uh, we've seen a bunch come and go this this past year. Um, a lot of guys just wanted to jump on the bandwagon, and it didn't really work out. And it's by the old guys like me. It's once I got into it, I'm like, I'm done. This is going to be a part of me until I can't do it anymore. Nice. And um, it's 
and this is what I'll tell any any guy or any girl who comes at me and is like, you know, how do I, and I've had guys, ask, I've had people ask me repeatedly, they're like, I'm developing a character, what can you, you know, what kind of tips can you give me, what can you say? So I try to tell them it's about the character. Uh, I've only met like two people that, that refuse to change their voice when they're in character. And to me, it is kind of a big deal. It helps, it just helps sell it. And you can, in, in creating the character, you get more into it. It's a lot more fun. And it's not, it's not just sitting in front of a camera talking like a normal person. And it's, it is kind of goofy. And, and I've had a lot of people that I know, like they'll, they'll, they'll pop in on a live feed knowing that it's me. And like, they're like, what, what am I looking at? What is this? I'm just, you just got to go with it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, all right. So uh, auditions for a haunted house. And um, I've, obviously never going to see one. I, I imagine that's probably, especially your first one. Um, take us through that, kind of what it's like to to audition for one of these places and how all that kind of works. I've been lucky. I've never had to do auditions. I've never even, like, never even, like, been involved in, like, watching auditions. I love that. That'd be great if I could do that. Yeah. Uh, they, they drug us in as teens, and they were just like, you know, throw some masks on. If you can jump out and scare somebody, you're doing pretty good. So... Um, I know how the audition process works and because there's a lot of people that, that will, they're like, Oh, I want to, you're doing a haunted house. I want to help out. And I'm like, uh, depends on if you can actually do it, not think it's a joke. Like, okay, this past year, me and my son run the room that I'm in. It's generally just me and him. Uh, there's a little hallway that comes up to our room and there were two teenagers in that room, sometimes three and in, in that little hall. And they were trying to do the purge. And we did have a couple people get it. They, they saw the masks. They got that it was the Purge. But he thought that using the Purge soundtrack was a good idea for the haunted house. So like 90% of the music he was playing was not haunted house friendly. And I was like, you got to train these kids. These kids don't know. So I kept telling him, I'm like, dude, you need, you need scarier music. You need something else. And he didn't. And my, my son's not listening. I, I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, he never actually got better music. He would he would occasionally play, may, maybe play one good song, but my, I generally would have my music so loud that it kind of overshadowed his anyway. But, um, okay. So uh, as far as getting pumped up, um, whether you're doing your professional clown now or, or beforehand when you were just doing regular haunts, was there a any rituals you had to kind of get yourself psyched up and in character mode and ready to go, or any little well, pregame, uh, pregame stuff you got going on to get you psyched up and ready to do this. It's usually just, and and everybody in my house will will attest to this being a constant, and it's not even just for getting pumped. Uh, when I go to take a shower, I cut on uh, like a Halloween party music thing on Pandora, just so it's pumping out something Halloween related. But uh, it, it, that's one way that definitely gets me in the mood, especially if I, when I get to the haunt and I'm cutting all the lights on and I'm getting ready, once I got the music going, and I'm already in costume at that point, but once I'm, once I'm at the haunt in costume and that music starts playing, then that's when it, it, everything gets easier. The character, I get hyped. It's, it's, a, it's a lot funner at that point. Awesome. Very cool. Um, has it gotten easier to get into character over time? Um, I'm sure the first time maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's gotten a lot easier. Um, it's, and it's with a lot of things. Um, cause I used to be an, an indie comic artist and I didn't like necessarily talking to people. If there was a conversation going that I was interested in, I would jump into it, but, uh, doing the comic thing and going to conventions and like having to talk to people constantly. I started opening up more and became more of a chatty Kathy and that definitely helped with all of it. Um, it it's, it's just, I don't know. I, I lost track. <laughs> You're good. You're good. Um, I'm still a little nervous about this. I'm still a little nervous. Wow. Well, that, that's crazy. Cause uh, we are, uh, that, that's, I appreciate that. Um, I'm <laughs> obviously a little nervous myself with all this. This is, um, so cool for us to be able to do and get to talk to you guys and um and and see things from your end um i think that the owners of these places um sometimes get all the credit and all the all the hoopla and the story you know kind of kind of centers around them not of their own fault or anything like that but i think sometimes the actors are overlooked and without the actors and without 
you guys doing what you do, haunted houses are shit. And um, they actually oh, yeah. absolutely make it. We really wanted to be able to have the opportunity to talk to you and give you guys the stage for a minute and um, and, and tell your story and uh, why you do what you do and why you're here, man. So, so we, we love doing it. Um, and yeah, I was just, just as nervous as anyone else, I promise. Um, and that's a, and see, so you, you brought up a good point because the haunt that I used to work at, which literally, if I run out my back door, it'll take me two minutes to walk to it. The haunt that I used to work at, which I actually gave, I gave it its name. It was called Burkeville Asylum back in the day. We were having a meeting about the name and they were like, oh, we should call it Burkeville Manor. And I was like, it doesn't look like a manor at all. It's just, it looks like, uh, it looks like the top of it. And it kind of had this like asylum-y feel. So I threw that out there. Well, me and the me and the guy that run that ran it, and this has happened to a lot of haunts. And Chris Sanders can preach on this if he ever sees this video. He'll be like, "Yeah, yeah, I can." Uh, so a lot of times, the guy or the or the or the people running a haunt really don't know what they're doing, and it is the actors that are the backbone. So this guy in Burfell that that was running the show, um, over the years we'd had a lot of guys and girls. Uh, quit because they couldn't handle his BS and it kept getting worse, kept getting worse, more drama, more BS. I could write and probably one day maybe want to write a book about my dealings with him and that haunted attraction. <laughs> and I left him going on almost four years now. Uh, yeah, it was almost four years and having watched all my friends leave, a lot of my friends leave. And then this past year he only had, like a handful of the core members left. They all quit. All of them quit finally. So he was on his own this year. So he gets a whole bunch of teenagers to help out. And from what I heard, it was not not the same. It was not scary. It was just more like it was when we first started. A bunch of teenagers, not nobody really knowing what they're doing. Um, luck, luckily, nobody got beat up. But <laughs> Experience makes a big difference, man. It makes a huge difference. Oh, yeah. Thanks, man. And just just the actors are it. If you if you if you as an owner don't respect your actors, you've got a probably a real short future in front of you as far as remaining in this industry. Because I've I've been to several haunts, and I've had some where the environment was a little underwhelming. But as long as the actors killed it, it was fine. I've never went through one that had shitty actors, no matter how great the environment was or how cool the story was, and walked away with positive experience, man. So I'm 100 percent on the same page with you there. I think that's a uh, it's very true. The actors are the backbone. Of all of this. Oh yeah. Um, so other than other than yeah. the clown um, character that you had going on, what would you say before that was your most favorite character that you ever got to do? Oh, oh, that I ever got. Let me see. Oh, we tossed up a lot over the years. I did have fun when I was the the the, the typical chainsaw guy. Uh, there was one year that when I learned uh, a very easy trick of the trade because it's very old wooden building and yes i have a i have my halloween cat in my lap right now my solid black he's he's an attention whore so he wants attention right now uh we i learned that all right cat we're gonna fight i'm gonna get him down <laughs> i learned that uh when you're using a saw without without the blade you know without the chain on it uh if you put it on the ground with these old wooden slatted floor when you put it on the ground it vibrates the floor Oh. So people would people would come through, they'd hear the saw crank, that would scare them, but they're still having to get around the room and around me because the way the path was made. And at the same time, you set that saw down and it's vibrating the floorboards and it that, that just adds to the to the shock value. And that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Very cool. And yeah, it wasn't even it wasn't even really like a character at all. It was it was kind of a I had a couple of different kind of just messed up almost zombie like masks but uh definitely not super character driven until the whole clown thing started i got you very cool all right um so what has been um if you could look back at some of the different haunted attractions that you've been to yourself just as a just as a guest um is there one particular that sticks out in mind that you were just like that place was that place was the shit um any any particular favorite haunts that you like to hit up yourself oh um Oh, see, this is uh, oh, having a favorite. And it's weird because there's a couple of things that really pushed me to want to do haunts anyway. Mm -hmm. But as far as favorites, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to have to say 
the Haunted River at, at uh, Kings Dominion here in Virginia. Uh, it's it's been long gone. It's been long gone. They they got rid of it years ago to make new rides out of this giant, you know, fabricated mountain they had. But Haunted River was the first actual haunt I ever went through, and I was a kid, and it was by today's standards very simple. Uh, nothing fancy, all animatronics, great music, great atmosphere. But it, as a kid, especially I, I'd probably say the first 10 times I ever went on, it scared the shit out of me. Mm -hmm. But, and I, I miss it though, because stuff like that doesn't exist anymore. Um, my current favorite haunt, which I got to make an appearance at though, is Nightmare Mansion in Virginia Beach. Uh, I know the guys who run it and uh, I'm good friends with one of the actors there and he, invited me down and me and my son went and the, my son worked on the inside that night. I worked on the, on the outside uh, with the other guy. I uh, just worked in the crowd trying to get people to come in. And that was a lot of fun. But uh, that, that haunt I had been in a number of times over the past couple of years. Uh, even, even when I was younger, uh, it has changed a lot, but they, they've gotten more professional. Matter of fact, we're going to, uh, me and Billy and pop, pop, me and Billy and one other guy from, from that haunt are going to trans world. So I'm really excited about going to trans world. <laughs> would be too. That's awesome. Awesome. All right. Um, so we know that the, the people like us, sometimes the, the haunted attraction enthusiasts and the actors and the storytellers, uh, sometimes I guess the quote unquote regular world wants to put kind of a bad stigma on us. Um, oh yeah. I've been able to interact with, I, man, it's a huge family of some of the coolest fucking people I've ever met. Um, but uh, what would you say to somebody that kind of looks like that and says, man, that's that's some messed up stuff. I don't know why anybody wants anything to do with that or why you are a part of it. I don't understand it. If you could say one thing to that person, what would it be? If you don't like it, don't don't be involved. Turn around, go the other way. You know, kiss my ass. <laughs> I, had, I had a manager at a bar that I worked at last year. Uh, he always, he just, he never understood it. And like, he was so like shitty about it on my, on my styrofoam cup at work where people would write their names. So nobody would throw their drink out. I would write moist and everybody knew why. And this asshole would run by and throw it in the trash every time he saw it. And he was like, I'm going to throw it away every time. And I was like, that makes you such a big man. It really does. And I, and he, and a number of times he was like, I just don't understand it. I don't understand the whole clown thing. And I'm like, I, I felt like saying, well, I look at you as a clown. You just don't happen to wear makeup. And it's not exactly the same kind of clown, but yeah, clown. me and him didn't get along too good. <laughs> the clown's way worse, man. Uh, um, well, that kind of answers the next question we were going to talk about. Um, with Have you ever been personally met with any adversity um, due to a role that you've played? Um, other than that particular incident there, has there been any other times that uh, somebody's Given you shit in particular for just a character that you've played that they've not understood or anything else? Or is that really the only time that it's anything like that's ever happened? Uh, I've made appearances as Moist, and a lot of people see a, a big clown coming their way. They rather just avoid you, or they might give you a dirty look. And there was one funny story. I made an appearance at Richmond Comics, and... Um, was in costume. I was looking at some stuff on the wall. I know the guys who, who run that store, good, good friends with uh, the, the main guy at Richmond, uh, Tommy Donovan. And uh, there was a teenage girl like right off to my right, not, not even 10 feet from me. And I saw her kind of inching more towards her family and she's probably 15, 16 tops. And her dad was like, you know, what's wrong? He, he, you know, it's, it's, he's not going to hurt you. And she was like, no, nah, fuck that clown or something like that. And I, <laughs> I looked over at her and I was like, you know, we have feelings. We have feelings too. And everybody laughed. I wasn't. I was crying. But... <laughs> that's cool. Um, and that's good. You interacted with her. Oh, like and, that, man. oh yeah. But no, I haven't, I haven't had a whole lot of negativity outside of just, you know, a couple of, you know, people who wanted to voice their opinion that I didn't care about. <laughs> <laughs> fuck those people anyways. Um, all right, so um, we've ourselves noticed um, from what little time that we've really uh, started to get into this industry a little bit more that the immersive haunt is, is really on the rise and um, seems to be um, not necessarily the complete future, 
of haunted attractions, but the uh, the personal, the the touch aspect of the haunts, um, places like Scarehouse, the Basement, and Blackout, and uh, the Fear Experience, the Victim Experience, some of these other places that are really pushing the envelope. Um, what are your feelings on haunts like that? Um, I love your question so far. <laughs> okay, so uh, being that I've done haunts as long as I have and been from the bottom all the way up to, you know, a, an actual character and not just doing the haunts, I've seen and I've watched every documentary, every movie I can find about haunted attractions. And there's a bunch I want to make appearances at this coming year. Uh, and with, with the haunts like that, like Blackout, um, I don't even think I would go through blackout. Mm -hmm. And as as a bouncer, I can deal with a lot of stuff. I can deal with a lot of shit and just I, I just brush it off. It, it takes a lot to get to me. Uh, I don't want to test that, you know. Like, and I dare I say, McKamey Manor, because Ugh. like the hardcore the hardcore haunt people like me, McKamey Manor doesn't is not a haunt. Thank McKamey Manor, and it. Uh, I hate going through Facebook and it's like people you may know and his ass rolls across. And I'm like, Nope, <laughs> Nope. But it's not, it's not a haunt. If you're torturing somebody. I agree. Um, if you're if the, the base, the base core of a haunted attraction should be to unnerve you, to scare you. And you do that with sound and music and any kind of ambiance, the visuals, uh, which I love doing because as an artist, I'm painting everything and, and doing everything I can to make my room have a lot to look at. And I don't like that. I don't like that torture aspect. Yeah, I don't mind watching movies like that. I'm a big Saw fan. But uh, as far as being an old guy with a camera, you know, filming these guys being tortured until they give, it, it's it, that that is torture porn. People call the Saw movies torture porn. But no, no, haunts like that can take it a little too far. Now, if you want to pay the money to go to that, that's fine. That's fine. It's not me. It never will be. And I'm fine with that. Yeah. No, I'm right there with you. I think there is a, there's a real good balance between being, um, being boring and, and then just being a, a torture chamber. Um, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we got the opportunity to, to uh, uh, go to scare houses, the basement production this year. And it's such a beautiful balance. There was no point that you were, in any like actual pain or, or, or anything like that, or you felt like they were going too far with anything and they just told a story and they just got a little more in your face with it than maybe what you're used to. And it was a perfect balance. But then to think of something like McKinney Manor, I, I'm right there with you, man. He's just, it's a snuff film almost. And um, just without actually executing it, it's, it's, uh, I'm with you. I'm not a fan of it either, man. Um, oh yeah. Well, we got one more question here for you, um, and we're kind of—it's a it's very open question. Um, if you have anything that you could say out there to people that that, that come and see you, come and see your attractions, anything about the upcoming future of haunts, or just just really anything that you would want to say out there to the haunt community, um, to the haunted honeymoon family, um, open floor for you, man. Whatever you'd like to go with, it's uh, it's all your way. Um. It, it definitely start young uh, or old. I mean, it start at any point, but it to, to do it, take it seriously. It's not a game. It's not. It's for fun, but if you take it as a game, people are liable to get hurt. My, my, my first experience at a haunted house, and, you know, I watched a guy get drug out for getting knocked out because he didn't know what he was doing. He thought he could be, you know, handsy with the actors. Um, but create a character. Don't just – throw on a mask and decide you want to go jump out and scare people, you know, have your room have a, a rather a really good theme or a story behind it. If you can, uh, sometimes rooms that keep you in there as long as they can. And it helps draw you into the experience. And it, it's, it's just really easy to jump out and say, boo, which I tell people, that's one of the things I tell everybody. You never in a haunted house, you never say boo, you <laughs> never say that. And you can jump out and scream. You can jump out and scream all you want, but saying "boo" is just kind of insulting to the to the trade. But it's more about creating the character, creating the environment. Uh, you want people to, to when they get done, 
and they get to think about what they just saw and what they just went through, you know, I don't want them to just go, oh, that scared the shit out of me. I'd rather them go through and then be like, all right, the clown room really got to me. It was really pretty, but it got to me. Yes. And, or even, even on a music level or sound effects, anything, it, it's a million times better to affect someone in every level. It's almost like 4D without actually being 4D. You know, you want, it's, it's, I'm very, I'm very anal about that. I really love the whole, the whole concept of it. Yeah. But, and, and it's the, the haunts that are coming up. I know a lot of guys who do the home haunts and they put a lot of heart into it and a lot of time and a lot of money and they don't charge a lot of money and, and they, they do it for the heart of it and because they love it. And I've seen some bigger attractions charge an arm and a leg for bullshit. Yep. And I, I don't like those haunts. Um, but the ones I want to, the ones I want to make appearances at this year, uh, they have great characters. They have great haunts and it's been, it's been like an itch. So this, and I, I saw a lot of my friends this past season make appearances and I'm like, I think I might have to shoot for that this year. <laughs> really need to shoot for that because I want to. I want to be able to expand it a lot more than what I'm doing. And as much as I love the haunt that I'm at now, uh, and it, it's a nonprofit organization completely. It's run by uh, the local fire department. So everything we do, we do it. You know, ourselves. Money goes in. All the money goes towards the fire department. And that's the kind of stuff that I love. Is doing it for a purpose. Very cool. And. Um, just like I said, take it seriously, take it seriously. Cause me, it's not, especially now as a, as a clown and whatnot and horror movies being my life, it, it's not just, you know, Halloween is, is a state of mind. It's not just a, a time of the a time of the year or a, or a holiday. It's a, it's a, it's a constant thing for me. Yes. It's, it's becoming a constant thing for us these days too. <laughs> we, uh, we, we have really extended our Halloween season um, uh, exponentially now. Um, hopefully just keep it going forever <laughs> and ever. Um, that's at least the idea, as long as this crazy ride wants to last. But um, and anyways, we thank you so much for uh, giving us just a little bit of your time, man, and getting to talk to you, getting to know you a little bit better. Um, you sound like an awesome, awesome fucking person. Um, and, uh, thank you so much. You guys are great. Here comes the cat again. <laughs> <laughs> He's been attacking my hand the whole time. Uh, we've had cat issues too. We've had him jump up in the middle of live videos and everything else. So it's oh yeah. But if you guys ever need me for anything, uh, any subject matter from haunts to horror movies to anything, I, I'm game. Cool. Well, we got I'm a new lift coming out tomorrow for an education in horror. Uh, we got a whole uh, hour long uh, episode on everything to do with her. Um, and then we got a few oh, cool. other things that are coming down the pipeline with that as well. And um, we're actually looking at doing an episode uh, on the uh, evolution of haunted houses, and we would definitely want you involved in that one. Um, when and if oh, that awesome, happens. awesome. So <laughs> we'll let you we'll let you get back to your cat and um and back. Yeah. To your cat. Um, and thank everybody for right. tuning in. Um, we're gonna have this posted up for you. Very first episode live with Chris. Thank you so much. Talking scared. We're done for now. Have a good one.